and welcome back. And today I want to carry on talking about Google Wi-Fi. Along with this and other Wi-Fi mesh routers, I'm doing a whole review of all of the big ones that are out in 2019 for you guys to buy. And so many of you have bought this one. I know it's not the newest, it's been around for a while now, but Google Wi-Fi still consistently seems to be a good choice for a number of you. We've already done a hardware review, and today I want to do a software review, as well as show you guys exactly the kinks, what's good and what's bad about this device. So let's make our way over to the mobile application, and we'll get this device um, up and running and put it through its paces. We've already done a hardware review. We've already done some speed tests. I believe that video has probably already gone live and mesh first time setup. And of course, we've still got comparisons with the likes of Synology's mesh system and more coming up. But let's look at Google Wi-Fi, the application. Before I even get into it, do remember that you'll have to install the application uh, from iOS or Android on your smartphone device. And also remember there isn't a desktop equivalent of this although there is a Chrome extension, I believe. Now, before we can go into the application, there at the middle of the screen on top of my cat's head, it's worth mentioning that there are contextual options as well. If you press and hold on there, we can see that there are additional options for opening family Wi-Fi and testing the internet. I'll get into more details about these later on, but this is just a little bit about why the Google Wi-Fi app is, to me, the best app out there for mesh systems. I've never been particularly secretive, about my disdain for mesh systems that only use mobile apps in my other videos covering the TP-Link Deco, the Linksys Velop system and more. I've always been abundantly clear that as good as I think an app is, and I think there should be a mobile application, there should also be a desktop app for businesses or more enterprise level users who want the configuration options available. And the applications try to maintain things to be much more che chewable friendly and touchscreen when what you want is hardcore configuration options for your network. That said, Google Wi-Fi comes pretty damn close. So if we open up the application here, we've created that mesh network in a previous video. We've got three Google Mesh points. We used the Google Wi-Fi 3 pack, which retails for about 330 quid, give or take. So it's not the cheapest out there. But all of the safe surf options and Google Wi-Fi and family Wi-Fi are all included with it. Um, when you open up the app for the first time, the, the menu here at the top left, we can see lots of information about adding Wi-Fi node points. And it's worth mentioning that Google have included 24-7 tech support with human beings at uh, one touch from your application. And they can actually access your Wi-Fi router point as long as you've got internet connectivity and configure it manually if you need it done. So that's an option no company offers you, not even Synology, who have got a great reputation of customer support, have included um, a, you know, a nine to five or 24 seven contact area for you to get immediate support on your device. So you know, network virgins are gonna enjoy something like that considerably. Now, on the front here, it's kind of like your notification screen. Those that have ever used Google Home will be remarkably familiar with this design. Google likes to not just give you a solution, but a real wrapped up package of an application, and it's pretty impressive indeed. If you look back at my videos with the Linksys um, Velop application and the TP-Link Deco application, both of them they had the same attitude about keeping things as simple as possible. But of course, the Linksys Velop system made things way, way too basic, hiding a lot of things behind uh, in, in the background there uh, and make you pay for a lot of the options. Whereas the De Deco system gave you all the options and managed to be quite user-friendly about it, but it didn't really go much beyond networking. The Google application has a number of key selling points that are just very, very unique to this software. So if we make our way into the networks um, setting here, we can see our setup here. And these are just the key numbers. If we go to the internet option there, we can find out lots of information about our current connection into one of the mesh nodes here. And I've got one node that's connected to the internet via a WAN port running into my internet service provider router, which I've obviously disabled that Wi-Fi. And the other mesh nodes are connected. If we go back, we can go back to the Wi-Fi points. And there is our primary one at the top with the internet connectivity. And we have two more here as well. A lovely little feature here that I quite like is if we go into one of these, not only can we adjust the LED light on the top, which I can see from here getting brighter or dimmer depending, but on top of that, 
you can move the location of the Wi-Fi point and alert uh, the device to know that you're going to do that. Or you can do individual speed tests that I'll go into more detail with later on. And there's all the network connectivity and more about the device along with the software. We can alter some of this information as well and come up with new labels for the device with Google labeling. And of course, you can do much, much more with all of these. If we go to the bottom, we can test our mesh network and it will check how healthy the mesh network is overall. This is an option that has been sort of apparent uh, with the VELOP system and the DECO system, but they were done very, very poorly. And only the Synology um, in mesh testing and this Google mesh test were anywhere near as good. If we come out of there, on top of that, we can do those individual tests, if we will, on different items. And if we make our way back out of here, we can go into the devices. Now from here, these are the three connected devices right now on this Google Wi-Fi network. It's two desktop PCs and the phone that I'm on right now. We can go into them individually and find out information about the data being utilized at any given time. Or even better, we can go into the setting here and make it a priority device. So uh, permanently or over a certain period of time. What that means is that what that device is doing with the internet is of such high importance, if you set it that way, that it doesn't matter if other devices are on the network. Their individual connections, such as those two desktop PCs, will have their connections minimized if the priority device needs that bandwidth. And you can have that to be set up automatically or manually if you so choose. On top of that, if we make our way back out of the devices section there, without setting a priority device, we can look at the third option. And from here is where things get real interesting. Because here are those more, you know, analytical and detailed um, settings that I care about a lot on a network device. They've still kept it nice and chewable and user friendly. Um, but if we go into the network check, from here we've got a lovely selection of options where we can test the internet connectivity and we would go to there and it will check the upload and the download of our local network uh, and its connection to the internet and it will then issue us with our existing upload and download speeds in our location in this case i'm in an office block here and it will give us our upload and download tests very very shortly i'm going to keep talking till it's on screen Fingers crossed it's any second now because I'm running out of things to say to you. I could skip forward, but I'm not going to. There we go. And we've got 65 megabytes download, 83 megabytes upload, which isn't too bad. And it's telling me right now just how fast our internet connection is. And also even details the extent to which a connection like that can support, which is pretty neat. Next, you can check the strength and the health between the existing mesh points. It will then do a quick scan of the mesh points in your local environment and tell you how good or bad they are. Now, it's worth mentioning, as I showed you during my initial mesh setup video, that I've got the node points very close together right now. I'm doing that because I want to bench test the self-healing later on when we do our speed tests, while we dot, when we dot these mesh points in multiple areas in this wide office building. And then detail just how good those have been as you can see the connection is very very good but of course they're going to be we're in a local area network uh, a local uh, in the geographical sense next we can test the wi-fi to individual devices so now it's going to run a test between all of the devices from the individual nodes so if i had 10 or 15 or 20 devices connected what it would do now is let me know how good the Wi-Fi connection is for those individual devices. So as we can see here, one of the Office PC devices is ranking 49 megabytes per second, um, I believe, um, the download. And next, we've got the Android device, which is effectively resting against the Wi-Fi point and has an exceptional speed there. Next, we can look at another PC. I've got the other side of the room that's on a 1G connection. And as you can see, because of that one gigabit per second connection, we now have speeds. And this option here is available on the Synology platform, but no other mesh device that I've utilized, even the Netgear Orbi, provide something like this. And I'm really, really impressed with this speed test option that we've just looked at. And again, you can run all the tests concurrently if you so choose. 
Next, there's the priority device option that we looked at earlier on, followed by password and get ready for the dullest password in the, in the world, password. And you can choose to share that with different devices here, which is again a nice neat idea when people are in your home or office. There's also the option of a guest network at the bottom there that lets you create a secondary network, which can then have limited access, if you so choose, to things on your network. You can decide, oh, we'll have to give it a different name. There you go, super unique. And then you can choose what devices this guest Wi-Fi can access. So if I had a smart TV, I can give them access to that. And I can give them access to, you know, um, a Sonos sound system or something. But say I've got a NAS on the network or surveillance cameras. I can say, if they are on the Wi-Fi, that they can and cannot access certain devices, which is pretty neat. If we go back and come out of that and exit, we can look at the more actions option here. And this is where we can configure some of the things that we've done. But of course, if we go into the network settings, there's our much more you know, enter, not, I'm not going to use the word enterprise, just the more data educated options for you guys for setting up static IPs and quality of service options, as well as notifications that are very Google centric. If we carry on, we have, which is probably one of the key things that Google sell with their device, which is family Wi-Fi. It's a scheduling system for devices to have limited or full access to different websites or the internet in general on a semi-autonomous level. Now, this is something that Synology also give you with their Synology router management software, but it's not as intuitive or as easy as you get it here on Google Wi-Fi. You create a label. So in this case, we're gonna call this one um, Younglings. Thank you, Star Wars. And we're gonna say that Younglings, this person owns two of these devices we're going to say that person owns these two devices maybe not the phone we'll let this youngling say it's a child in the house or two children in the house are working on two computers for school we've now created the tab for younglings on those two devices now from here is where we can restrict different kinds of content it doesn't have to just be adult content there's all kinds of things that it will block certain websites as and when and we can do the time schedule and more. So now we can create scheduled pauses for you know people in that labeled group, again, younglings or children, whatever you wanna call them. And we can say that these people can have access to the internet during these times, but we can say that if we write down their bedtime so they go to bed at eight and then get up at 6 a.m., they will have no internet connectivity on those devices during that time period. We can say that bedtime is repeated just on school nights. And there we go. At the touch of three buttons, we've now set it that they can only have internet during the day. But let's go one step deeper. Let's say that during homework time, so in the evenings, say between five and nine, or yeah, five and nine, why not overlap while they're asleep? Click there, we say that's weekdays. And now they can only access homework uh, during that time they will only have in access to the internet outside of those hours but we can go one step deeper what we can do from there is we can say that during this it will only restrict them from adult websites but we can go one step further and only give them access to websites like wikipedia and education sources and stop them going to websites like facebook twitter instagram and more if we go back and go beyond there, we can go into that young lean settings, and this is where we can configure and change a number of those settings while they're being set up. So if we go to the Wi-Fi settings from earlier on, we can add different kinds of labels and different groups as we go. And it's quite chewable and user-friendly. I would say even more so than the Synology, but I'll save that for the comparison. And lastly, home control. If you have Google Home, any of the little pods, little speakers, or the full-size one, you're able to control them directly from this user interface with Google Wi-Fi on your mobile phone device. And that's about it. As far as Wi-Fi software goes, it's pretty extensive and still manages to keep that Google user-friendly nature. I don't like a few of the things for a start. I don't like the fact that it's only a mobile app. Yes, there's a Google Chrome extension, but that's about your lot. And on top of that, <coughs> the device itself almost feels too simple. 
and all too often you're going to want to configure certain IP options or create sub mask net stuff or you know to go into static IPs with connected devices and this app does not do that sort of stuff very um, user friendly it makes it quite difficult that you have to find your way into the settings menu to configure those options and to me there should be a cog on screen at all times that lets me configure those options and not have to try to find it in this manner yes everything's new once but to me it could be a little bit more friendly to the more technical user who wants access to those options that are located here but i'm going to wrap things up here get ready for the synology router manager and synology router versus google wi-fi and google family and the google mesh system in my next video and i look forward to seeing you there cheerio